the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Good morning, guys, and welcome to episode 158 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Bexon. Today, we're going to be talking with Barry Roberts. Barry has been on the podcast before. Uh, if you remember, he's the former president of, Ca of Canator, which is the National Chamber of Tourism, the vice president of the ICT, which is the tourism ministry here, ministry here the founding member of Acroprot. Uh, the president of the Instituto Nacional de Biodiversidad, so Biodiversity uh, National Institution here in Bio, and now the face and voice for all things tourism in Costa Rica. Barry and I have been close friends for many years uh, and enjoy, I always enjoy his insights and knowledge when it comes to the development of Costa Rica and especially the roadmap of Costa Rica. We're working on that furiously together, uh, as well as with a lot of other, um, I would say, like-minded individuals in Costa Rica. So we're going to be talking to him about the industry, where he sees Costa Rica uh, going in the future, and just getting his input on kind of investing in Costa Rica. Remember, if you want to reach out to us for anything when it comes to investing in Costa Rica, you can do. Uh, you can contact us, info at investingcostarica.com. We have all of the data, and really we are kind of more financial investment guides when it comes to purchasing real estate, investing in Costa Rica. That can be commercial, it could be vacation rentals, condos, homes, hotels. Uh, as you guys know, uh, we've built, we've operated, managed, sold uh, a lot of those uh, various vehicles. So you can contact us, info at investing. Costa Rica.com. That's info at investing Costa Rica.com. But let's get straight into the podcast. Good morning, Barry. How are you doing? Hey, Richard. Good to be with you again and to have some time to spend together and see what's happening in the world, particularly in relationship to real estate and tourism in Costa Rica. So it's great to be here. No, it's a, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the podcast. I know the listeners really enjoyed last time you were on it, and I, I think you give a different viewpoint than a lot of the people that we speak to, just because I think that you kind of, you straddle that world between, I suppose, the private and public sector. Well, yeah, the, the many years of experience have thrown me in both sides. So <laughs> I've learned to play with the curveballs. <laughs> exactly. You know how to fight in the street and fight in the ring. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got to do that to survive, my friend, particularly in this country. <laughs> exactly. I can't. Was that Rocky Four or Rocky Five? I can't remember which one it was, to be honest with you. But yeah, Barry's done all the Rockies. Um, yeah. Well, let's get straight into it, Barry. I mean, with world economies kind of, you know, somewhat small, I mean, what have you seen happening here in Costa Rica? Well, the, definitely the world economy has an effect. I mean, uh, tourism for us, and I'm speaking from the tourism perspective, as that's my main area of expertise. Uh, and we have over 85% of our business is international. So the world economy has a definite effect on our business. And particularly the effect that the economy has in the US, Canada, which are our main partners, you know, basically US. We have almost 70% of our business comes from the US right now. It was less pre-pandemia, but it's more now that pandemic has, has been passed. And so what happens there has a lot to do with this. When there's less discretional spending funds in the States, then we see our tourism affected. So in effect, uh, it, is, it is affecting us. And it's also affecting us from the perspective of our own economic structures within the country. So the cost of our producing products and services has increased and is uh, in a very serious situation because the dollar exchange rate has changed a lot and we've lost a lot of income because the dollar has lost a lot of weight next to the colon due to some of the political decisions of this government so in, in general uh that the, the situation is tough it, it's very it's very complex and it's more complex now richard because we have a, a government that does not really believe in, in a full reality. They only believe in a partial reality. They okay. believe in the reality that, that, that suits them and what they can work with. And so they present things in a way that are, that are really uh, very interesting. And, and you can't say they're lying because they have data with which to back it up. But for example, they speak about the inflation and they talk about the inflation, but there's various types of inflation. And yes, the macro inflation for the country has diminished. 
and that's good in certain degrees, but that has not diminished the cost of going to the supermarket. That's continued to increase. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't diminish the cost of living. That continues to increase. So those are things that, that are very different because our reality is not in the macroeconomics. Our reality is in the day-to-day -day and in providing the services that we need for our clients. You know? Sure, sure. I mean, you'd, you'd mentioned just a couple, of, a couple of things that jump out there. I mean, if I'm correct, though, I mean, January, February, March, April, I'm not too sure how May and June are because I haven't looked at the numbers. I mean, we had record arrivals for tourism, right? Well, let's say record in the sense that uh, from certain perspectives, but that's, see, that's part of the problem. They yeah. say, okay, we have more, we have 1% more tourism arrival. It's not 1% more tourism. We're still 14% down. The problem is we have more air arrivals than we had in 2019, you see? Right. So you have more people coming in by plane, but then, for example, they don't take into account the great amount of people that come to the Liberia airport in northern Guanacaste and uh, just get off the plane, get on buses and go to Nicaragua. Yeah. And they, they don't take into account all these other things that, that mean a, a big difference. So uh, in reality, there's, there's a lot of questioning in terms of, of what you're doing with business the reality is we did have a very good high season and it would have been very very good had they not locked our our income down by 25 percent due to the exchange rate yep. because we establish our our rates at least a year in advance if not more in dollars in dollars internationally and so now that the dollar is worth 25 percent less but all my costs are in colonies see yep. the local currency is what manages my cost so so I've actually lost 25% of income. Now, which companies have so much profit that they can lose 25% income and still make money? Yeah. Not too many, particularly when you look at the fact that 90% of the companies in Costa Rica are very small companies, mom and pop operations, less than 10 people, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that is very, very serious and, and has affected us very, very hard. Yeah, I mean, we've certainly seen it in construction, Barry, as well. You know, recently we had the EVA, the, uh, you know, the um, value added tax here jump from 8 to 13 uh, percent on. Well, it jumps on the 1st of September here uh, for all construction here. Um, so we've seen that. But also that 25 percent, as you've seen, kind of weakening of the dollar against the Cologne. I'm not too sure. Did one get stronger and one got weaker? I can never work which one, you know. The Cologne got stronger and the dollar got weaker. Okay. But it's it's not responding to the international situation it's responding to local decisions local yeah. politics you know so i mean the cost of construction has gone up so in some extent you know when we look at projects now it sometimes makes sense to build and sometimes does not because you know with the price of homes that were built in dollars the previous year when they were started they were able to take advantage of that, you know, that strength that the dollar had against the Cologne, but new projects that are coming on board now, you know, the cost to build, you know, maybe didn't go 25%, but it, it definitely increased, you know, 15 to 20% on the build. So, um, well, yeah. that, and that affects a business. You can't, Correct. I mean, margins that size, those differences make too much, too much difference on your bottom line and your EBITDA to be able to, to make it, you know, make it with that. And so that's part of our problem, especially if you're talking with small companies. Yeah. You know, it's much harder. The real problem is what they've done is they've killed our liquidity. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we have assets, but we don't have liquidity, but you can't, you can't pay salaries off of assets. Correct. So you, and you can't pay for food off of assets. So that's part of our problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, how would you compare how would you compare 2023? So this year to, to compared to 2022 for tourism in Costa Rica? Well, it's been a it's that's an interesting question because from a standpoint of purely statistics of arrivals, it's been better. From a standpoint of of income and being able to generate any kind of a profit if, if if at all possible it's been very limited and you have to remember that we're just coming out of the worst period in tourism history in which we had zero income so our our debt structure which continued to accrue interest and penalties during the period we didn't pay yeah. gave us a much bigger debt structure now that we're recuperating than what we had before the pandemic so it's a very serious problem and i'm seeing a lot of companies that had plans to to remodel to to expand uh to increase personnel etc have all cut back 
there's less expansion, less renewing, less less employee contracting people out. I mean, yes, we're all, we're we're in the low season, and the low season you always get rid of some employees, but not to the degree that it's happening right now. We're getting a lot a lot more cutbacks in employees in tourism than we've had in previous years, percentage wise. And are you seeing a return to seasonality this year compared to, you know, 2022 was kind of what somewhat like a flat line, a great flat line, if that made sense. Whereas have you seen a return to seasonality kind of a little bit more this year of that post Easter, you know, May being a bit of a lull, June and July starts to pick up? Uh, actually, you're right. It has it has come back. The, the seasonality is now starting to show up. I mean, from, we talk with all our clients all around the country and uh, they tell us that they're seeing a decrease in in the amount of reservations and in the percentage that was going up previously. And so we do see and we do foresee that it's going to be a lot lower. This second semester is going to be a lot lower than anticipated and proportionate to what happened in 22. It's not going to maintain the same level of growth and stability that 22 had, although it was it was at a lower at a lower base. I agree. But what the base we have now is not going to hold up. It's going to drop because of the lower season. Yeah, I mean, I, I think anyone that's into tourism or anyone that's going to get into tourism just needs to understand here of like, it's like skating on ice and sometimes it's thin and sometimes it's not. You just can't sometimes see when it's thin. Um, you know, there's just a lot of variables out there that you don't control, like, again, exchange rates, you know, because... No foreigner wants to pay in Costa Rican colonas. It's confusing to them. You know, if they have to pay, you know, 250,000 colonas a night, they're like, I don't understand what that is. Whereas if they say it's $500 a night, they're like, oh, okay, I completely understand that, you see. So I think they're going to continue. It's up from 350 they were paying last year. Yeah, yeah, true. That's the exchange rate. See, yeah. That's what the problem is. And you have to add another thing to that, uh, Richard, which is very important to point out, is first of all, the cost of living in Costa Rica is 20% on an average higher than the whole average of Latin America. Yeah. So we have to start from ex- an ex- But that has not been a reason for not having good tourism because we've been able to give good quality experience. And that's great. However, the competition has not stayed put. And the competition has devalued their mo- their money relative to the dollar in Colombia and in Republica Dominicana, which are two main competitions for the North American market. And so they're competing at a forty percent dis- uh, difference. You know, they they they're they're really way up there in terms, and and we're suffering from it. That's part of what's ch- that's why we're having a, a downturn in the reservation increase. Yeah. Well, how do you think twenty twenty four is going to shake out? You know, it's very difficult for for another reason. I mean, it's very difficult because security has become a tremendously highly potential uh, tsunami coming around the corner. Yeah. Uh, the things that are happening, you know, what happened to the Canadian yesterday, uh, things like that are 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 things that are, are creating a, a very serious doubt. I mean, the U.S. State Department has not only raised us to level two, from level one to level two in security, and level three is don't travel. Yeah. But on top of that, they've put out warnings on top of that. So we're, we're in a very, very delicate situation, and we're not, we don't have the handle on it. We're not getting it together. And so we're having all kinds of delinquency and things like that, and people are just you know going crazy. So this is something that if you add to that the, the image that the president is generating by all of a sudden uh, authorizing the, the fishing, the, uh, the arrastre, I don't know how you say that in English, but the nets that drag along the ground on the floor of the ocean, which are totally anti-conservation and totally anti-biodiversity, et cetera. I mean, they're, they're criminal in that sense. And they're also uh, now talking about authorizing petroleum exploration and natural gas exploration. And they are establishing the, the amount of the, the capacity for a park, depending on what its uh, sewage can take. I mean, things like that are so ridiculous and they're giving us such a bad name internationally. We're yeah. losing the positioning that we had. I mean, Costa Rica, the two main attractions, nature and Pura Vida. Well, we're losing both of them because cost of living and, and the loss of jobs and, and the in, insatisfaction of people is changing attitudes. And at the same time, you know, we're, we're, we're having 
a lot more division being made in Costa Rica. There's a lot more class division. The poor are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer. And that's totally contrary to what the government is preaching, but that's what reality is. Barry, it sounds like you and I will be going on a crusade to uh, sue the government again and the, pri and the president. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we did it once and won. I'm, yeah, I'm sure, we did it I'm once sure. and we won. And I think we're, we're, we're about to have to consider that kind of actions in the future because they're, the irresponsibility with which they're making certain determinations are sure. really affecting us very, very seriously. And I think that, I mean, I was looking at a, at a document that was passed to me today. There's been uh, 21 reversals by the Supreme Court on decisions that the government has made. They've had 14 accusations put against them. They've had 36 ministers or vice ministers resign or thrown out uh, in, in 14 months, 15 yeah. months. And this is ridiculous. It's improvisation at the, at the worst, you know? And so these are things that, that we have to worry about very much. But uh, I mean, Costa Rica is a blessed country and we've survived everything up till now. And I'm asking God that we survive this one as well. We've got three and a half, two and a half more years to survive. I think the beauty of this country though is, Barry, is that there, the Supreme Court, you know, stops things from happening here. Individuals, groups of individuals can get together and they can push back and sue the governments. Like if you were to do that in the UK or the US, you better be ready to be audited for the next 10 to 20 years. Like people are scared of government here. We don't seem to have that relationship so much with government. Well, we're, we're not scared of the of the judicial system, but business people are scared of the executive because yeah. we have seen a lot of false accusations, persecutions, insults, defamation, et cetera, coming from the executive branch of the government yeah. against business people. And this is something that is is very, very tragic and very, very negative. I mean, the, the amount of of hatred and division and, and the rest that's being planted is is just unacceptable, to be real frank with you. Well, why is tourism not at the forefront of the government's radar in Costa Rica? I mean, I don't there hasn't since I've been here, I'm trying to think of a government that's really pushed it and it's been at the front of everything. You know, it's been really of their 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 number one, you know, charge. Um, maybe uh, you it's were not here. You were not here in '94 through '98. No, I that was not. Government was Jose Maria Figueres, and he did. He made a an agreement with the private sector, and we made a joint thing between the Ministry of of Tourism and the National Tourism Chamber, and we organized nine areas of work, and we had the ministers responsible for each area to meet with the rep, private sector representatives of each one of those areas, and we met every month with the president in the in the presidential house yep. in order to see the follow-up of what was going on and that's when we started sustainability that's when we started the whole the whole thing about cst the no artificial ingredients uh, the whole process that's where we positioned costa rica and that's where we got since then we have not had a government that's done that but part of the reason is after that, during that time, there was a lot less of us in the in the activity. So we knew each other and we worked together a lot easier. From that period forward, there's thousands and thousands of small companies that have shown up, which is great because that's the best product Costa Rica has, are all these small mom and pops, you know, the pura vida type situation. But then what happens is they don't have the organizational skills or the finances to get together and have like a, a Cámara Nacional de Turismo that really represents and has the authority to come and confront the government and tell them, you know, they need to fix this or that, like the Cámara de Industrias or, or the coffee makers or the, yeah. you know, cattle people, etc. So the real problem is most people do not understand that tourism is a strategic activity for recuperating the company and for generating jobs, but that it is intermingled with all the other activities. So they don't realize that when they take decisions in the government that affect roads, for example, they're yep. affecting tourism because they're giving access or not access to going there. Or if they if they make a decision in health and they don't and they decide not to go against the cholera or against the you know the plagues and stuff like that, then that has an effect. The security decisions, not having, not not being aware of what it's what it means internationally to have the security problems that we have, uh, those are things that people 
in general don't understand. So tourism is not is not respected for the force that it really is. Yeah. It does not have the weight that, that it should have. And and that's uh, that means that our minister is not very powerful within the within the governing body either. The yeah. Minister, ah, he's a minister of tourism. He's not even a minister. He's the president of the ICT with a rank of minister given to him. But it's not okay. a ministry, right? It's not a ministry. So that that shows you how little importance they give to tourism because we don't we don't we can't hit people on the table, you know, knock on the table and say, hey, I'm here, you know, because we're not organized that way. That's part of what we're trying to change. Well, I mean, or how many government ministers own hotels or have tourism businesses? I mean, it's very few probably. So they don't really understand that market. No, but what they do have is Airbnb houses. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have our problem. Correct. You know? We have yeah. a very serious problem with with informal renting of houses and stuff like that that are not paying a tax that they should and so are competing against hotels and now uh at least probably 15 percent of all tourists that are coming to costa rica are staying in houses instead of hotels that has a, that has an effect on your business yeah 100 100 percent. and i again and I it puts explain. a lot of pressure it puts a lot of pressure on the local communities that they're not ready to produce and serve yeah so it's it's very interesting. That's a serious problem that we have to deal with. I mean, we paint a pretty bleak picture here or, you know, in this conversation here, Barry, that like I think anyone that would be looking to do invest in Costa Rica or have a hotel or be in tourism here is like no way. I mean, security, you know, um, the lack of kind of I mean, I would say the, you know, the support by the government, like you know, the exchange rate fluctuations. I mean, is it as ble is it, a would you start a business today, in Barry, in Costa Rica? Would you advise people to do it? Yes, I would, uh, because even though there, these problems are there and we tend to look more at the things that we have to fix than the things that are working well, you know, because if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So yep. we work on the things that we need to fix. Uh, but I think that there's there's a there's a quality of lifestyle here in Costa Rica that you can't find anywhere else, and both in relationship to nature and in relationship to people and the rest. So, living here is a very comfortable place to live, and 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 in effect, your business you do to generate funds, but what you're trying to do is improve your quality of life. Yeah. So your quality of life can be in Costa Rica much better even though you don't have the resources that maybe somebody who has a lot of money has yeah but people who have a lot of money also have a good quality of life here too so it's not a problem so i i am not negative against the country i think the country is a unique little uh, little jewel uh i think we have a unique history a unique opportunity and we go through ups and downs like everybody and we learn through the things that we're not doing we have to be very careful and and we have to be very awake at, at you know the calls that are being made to us are hey wake up and smell the roses things are happening that you don't need to happen and and that shouldn't happen and that have been happening but yes i would invest and i would i would try to invest in in something that's consistent with with costa rica which is a combination between tourism and real estate and and also with involvement of local communities there we start giving a solidified situation that helps everybody and protects everybody and generates a community that is really prosperous and provides that environment that you want to have for the quality of life you're looking for and for the experience you're looking for. And this is what people come and they see. I mean, they come and they, they go into the, you know, to the houses of, of our workers and, and their grandmother is making tortillas and doing things and stuff like that. That blows everybody's mind. I mean, yeah. I have kids who come to a, who come to the farm and they've never even seen a cow milked. They think <laughs> milk comes in boxes, you know, because they, they've never seen how it works, you know. So yeah. those are things that that I think. So I, I think that that we do have to be very careful. We have to be very realistic as to what we're doing when we invest. You absolutely need to have very good partners such as yourself in terms of the knowledge that you have and the understanding that you have of how to do it how to play with the local situations good legal advice so you you have the contacts for good legal advice for good financial tax advice etc and if you do things right you're going to do well yep uh, you can do that but 
it's got to be done and it's got to be done with a perspective of of integration and of community sustainability as part of what you're doing not yeah. just a business but it has to be a business that gives back to the community so that the community grows with my business and my business grows with the community so i think in that with that perspective this is an ideal place to invest because yeah, I mean, the type of tourism that comes to costa rica richard is is looking for these small experiences these personalized experiences and this is what costa rica can really provide I mean, I think you said something there, which is that when you don't integrate with the local community and provide that authentic experience, which is what people are looking for, you're not going to be as successful in the short term and probably not in the long term either. You know, the, the when we look at the, you know, properties here in Costa Rica or the businesses that have done that, I mean, they've been around for a long period of time. Yeah, absolutely. You know. and, and, and they have had they've made uh, the communities thrive with them and they thrive with the communities and that's what we need to do so if you're going to develop don't come and try to impose a different style of living yep. try to adapt the things that you can bring because people like yourself that have come here now you're a Costa Rican so that's a good one congratulations thank you <laughs> but we have to appreciate what a lot of foreigners have come to Costa Rica many years back and started our first receptive tourism started with National Geographic and Audubon Society groups. Yep. That's what started our naturalist type tourism. So we have to be thankful for that. People who made, came and invested in hotels and stuff with Costa Ricans didn't see the business. So we, we are very open to foreign investment and we love foreign investment, but we do like people to incorporate into our society and add to our society instead of coming to impose on our society. Well, look, I mean, I think anyone that's trying to impose on society or change a culture here in Costa Rica, good luck. I mean, it's like, I mean, you're trying to get someone to turn up on time is difficult enough. I mean, if you try and impose your culture on that person, like they're never going to turn up and you're never going to get anything done. I mean, just don't swim up river in this country. Just float with it down and kind of roll with the waves and everything that's there in the rocks. Like if you you need to learn to be patient in this country. Uh, and and adapt to the culture that's there because again it will not adapt to you it will not no but you can influence it and Correct. that's a good and and that those are the things that have been good for us uh, with yep. all these foreigners that have come in and helped us is that it has been good to have this kind of you know influence where we start looking at things differently it's made us have to compete a lot better for example yep. a lot of people here locally have been rebellious against the big hotel chains because the big hotel chains represent big financing, big, in, you know, big companies, et cetera. And they're coming to make off of it. But the truth of the matter is, if we didn't have those hotel chains, first of all, we wouldn't have the marketing and positioning internationally that we have now to bring people. But on top of that, they're the ones who brought the high level management. They're the ones who taught us how to do things better, how to how to service at the level of the international standards and not at local standards. So you have to take things in a balance. And that's one of the nice things about Costa Rica is that balance is what we're looking for. And that's what we we found throughout the, the whole development of tourism. And I believe the real estate is incorporating that sense. It's been a lot more recent, for example, that uh, tourism companies have recognized the transcendental importance of, of, of real estate within the development of tourism destinations. Yep. I mean, if I don't have real estate development, where do I put my employees? Do Correct. I give them rooms that I would normally rent to my clients to be able to stay, or do I get housing? How do I get schooling? How do I keep my employees if I don't have schools? Well, to have schools, I need residences and things like that. So we're starting to see a more, that's why we're, we're pushing so much the development of sustainable tourism on the basis of regenerative development. Yep. Because we need to start with bottoms up, local governance, incorporation of the local communities with the macro planning, and it has to work both ways. It's like building a tunnel. You need to work from both sides towards the middle. You, yep. You can't work from just one side. Well, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, again, where real estate kind of goes in Costa Rica. But I mean, if the past is a predictor of the future, which a lot of the time it is here in Costa Rica, wherever tourism strong, real estate will always be strong. Yes. And and, and that's a good thing. Uh, there is there is a, a, a balance that needs to be looked for. I mean, in Guanacaste, as you well know, now we have houses that are totally out of the reach of Costa Ricans in terms yep. of the financial cost and 
even for renting. Things like that are, are, are extraordinary. But on the other hand, that also brings a flow of money into the thing. You hire people, you have to have services and the rest. So, so you have to look at it in a balanced form. So if you can put in indicators, social progress indicators to the communities where things are developing, and you can see those indicators improving, then you're doing okay. It's when those indicators don't improve, then you're abusing, and that's when you have to make a corrective move. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, let's change gears a bit. I mean, if you had um, a time machine, uh, you know, to travel back 20 years, Barry, and you were to invest in something in Costa Rica, what would it have been and why? Well, it was uh, and, and it would still be is anything that has to do with sustainable tourism and incorporating the local production into the, the local production of supplies included into the development of the services that we provide to the tourists. See, because I believe that one of the things that we have lacked a lot on is we've imported a lot of food goods and stuff like that where we should be producing them. And then we bring them from other areas instead of, and, and have all the cost of transportation and stuff like that. When there's all the locals, I mean, the guy who's my waiter, his parents probably have a little property nearby that they have a huerta on where they have a little garden they can generate the salads for my clients that kind of stuff so i i have always worked in that area and i would continue to work in that area and trying to bring the community more involved into what we're doing on the basis of things that we've learned and, and as i pointed out regenerative development is is a new science to a certain degree or a new philosophy if you want but it's very, very to the point and very correct in terms of integrating all the different aspects so that you feel satisfied, so that your quality of life improves, but also the ones of your employees and of their families as well. Yeah. And that's how we're going to have long term profit. That's how we're going to have long term. And that means also taking care of nature. I mean, if we don't take care of the nature, I mean, nature is our major attraction. So if we don't take care of nature, we're screwing ourselves. But then again, if you have that kind of stuff, you you diminish uh, in physical insecurity because you have less crime, because yeah. more people have resources and they don't have to look for other sources of, of how to feed their kids because they have enough money to feed them with the jobs and the things that they're doing. Uh, and it's a cycle. So it, it's it, and it's very, very preoccupying to see how in general uh, the, the whole security system is falling apart, not only in Costa Rica, in general, in many, many places, but Costa Rica is not an exception. And we have a serious problem in that respect that we need to solve very much so. And, and, and we don't want, we have places, you, you, you know them, like Santa Teresa and others that are becoming almost like little Miamis. I mean, you know, they're, they're, yep. they're a whole different type of development because there's no planet reguladores. So, if I were to ask for one thing right now, if I were to decide one thing that I would want for tourism, it would be a national tourism policy that forces everybody that gets any kind of public financing of any sort to have to include the priority concepts and, and mapping of tourism development in Costa Rica within their planning structure and their execution of things. To me, that would make a big difference. I mean, the big problem is, you know, we have 85 different municipalidades in different places, and, and no, only three of them have some kind of knowledge of tourism, none of them, none of the rest do. And most of them don't have uh, planes reguladores, which are the, you know, the plans for regulating zoning. Yep. Zoning, zoning plans and stuff like that. And, if you don't have zoning plans, then it's up to whoever is in power at the moment to decide whatever he wants yeah. in terms of whether you can use it or can't use it, how much it costs, how much it doesn't cost, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to develop this very, very urgently. We need to develop the, the zoning plans for all the different areas of tourism destinations that, that need to, because those are the ones that are fastest, being, being developed the fastest, and those are the ones that need this kind of a, a protection and care as soon as possible. Barry, we talked about if you could go back 20 years, but if you were investing today for the next 20 years, like where would you where would you be investing and what would you be investing in? Again, I would be investing in, in the combination between tourism, real estate and community development. And uh, I would do it in rural zones and in coastal zones particularly in the coastal zones, which are, are really, really needy of, of being, they've been abandoned and, and forgotten for many, many decades. 
And so we need to develop them. And they're closest to our main attractions as well, which is interesting, you know. So we need to be able to have the attractions for, for the tourists, but we need to provide an ambience by which the experience will be. If we can do that, and we can guarantee them the improvement of the quality of life of the societies, then we will have educational systems, health systems that will provide us with the workers that we need to be able to continue to, to develop our tourism uh, development. And it will go through different stages and different phases. I mean, at some point, your real estate will be more important or more of a priority than your tourism. At other points, it'll be your tourism. But then at other points, your, your community development has to catch up. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then you have a Which discount. is usually last which is usually last. So that's, that's, that's where I would invest towards the future as well. And I think that's a long-term guarantee. When any, partic the, any particular vehicles, things that you would do that you think that would cover those things, just to give people that are listening here kind of a bit of an idea of like, you know, because what you're saying is beautiful. I mean, it's real estate, it's tourism, it's community, bringing those three things together, you know, but what would be some examples, Barry? Well, Richard, the thing is, you know, it depends on where you're working it, uh, you know, a local area, how big the volume of attraction of tourism is and what you can do with it. That's going to have a simplification. I think that you need to start by doing individual projects that are, that are, you know, very within your grasp to do things properly, but that have enough pressure on the community to be able to influence the community positively and to influence the response of the community towards your project as well because that's going to help you in security help you in employees help you in all kinds of stuff but it, it's it's hard to say you know i mean i think you need to look at, at at properties that are that are properly set up legally that you don't have a legal problem with them and that they can be properly used and exploited that they have the the zoning the zoning that does exist does allow for developing what you want to do and and then you have to go to the to the positions make sure that you're starting to work in places see it depends on how adventurous you are if you want to go on a place that's that's uh that's fairly close you could go someplace close to Hako, for example and do something like that or if you wanted to really get out there in matapalo and do something yep. that's very very unique and very isolated which is part of the good thing about it and the rest so it, 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 unfortunately there's for all there's all types of people and actually it's people like you that can best advise these investors as to where to invest depending on what they want and make it so that they have fun doing it as well they they, they need to if they're going to come and invest here they need to come and look at it not just as a business they need to come and look at it as it's something that they want to do that they're going to enjoy doing that they're going to be able to enjoy in the future by using it by renting it by whatever but but it's got to be a, an incorporated thing if you want to make it last if it's just a business it's going to be run over sooner or later i 100 percent agree i mean to do anything in costa rica you've got to have fun and i won't take on a project that's not fun it won't work with people that don't want to have fun i always say i'm a little bit cheeky um but i think it's part of the dna of what makes costa it's rica possible better. it's possible and that's a great yeah. thing yeah you know so Okay, I've kept you long enough, Barry. I know you're busy, but my last question for you, but I think I know the answer for it because you've probably answered it. But if you inherited $500,000 and had to invest it into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you invest it in and why? Okay, I would not start up a, a, a project on my own. Yep. Because you need to have working capital and you need to maintain things and the rest. So that would diminish what you have available. So I would seek out what is a, a a project that follows my ideological principles, my protection for nature, my protection for the communities, etc., and then invest in that and maybe have an option for buyback and for expansion that would allow me to invest. Now, some of these projects will allow us to invest and get guaranteed by, by means of property. For example, they'll, they'll let you build a condominium within a development they have. So yep. you actually have, you have a guarantee in that sense, if that's what you like. But if not having shares within a company that you can do it, things like that would also be. But I, I, I wouldn't try to do it uh, on an individual basis unless I was going to live there. Yeah. See, there's a different ballgame. If I'm going to live there and run it myself, that's a different ballgame. If I'm going to have somebody else run it, it's a whole different perspective. I think you're the first person after 158 episodes that said that you would seek out 
something that's already existing and invest in something that's existing, like as an investor, rather than, you know, typically it's I'll build a hotel. These are the businesses that are missing. I'll buy a vacation rental. It's interesting what you say, just because, again, you know, I mean, you mentioned there at the beginning of the conversation that the plight of the hotelier sometimes is access to capital, you know, is access to capital to develop, build, working capital, run their business, et cetera. So investing $500,000 into an existing property to either help them expand, improve, increase ADR, like the every that machine is moving. Like if you just feed that machine, like it could move quicker. Well, and there's one other thing I would add to that. I hope you come with a different perspective that will make the company change its ways so that it doesn't have the same problem in the future. And, yeah. and maybe look for companies that need to strengthen more their community development or need yep. to strengthen more their integration with nature or things like that and bring the money in to do that. Say, okay, this is, you know, this is going to be part of your project, but it's going to do that. That's going to end up giving you much better value for your company anyhow. I mean, you, you see it in hotels, Barry, I mean, where there is a strong connection with the community, the staff stay there longer, they're happy. I mean, I'm just going to take the example uh, here of Arenas Del Mar, you know, with hands that they're at Cayuga, you know, they have a big focus on sustainability and employing local people, et cetera. And you can just see, I mean, the staff have been there forever and they're happy. Like people are just blown away of like, every time I come back to the hotel, the staff are the same. Well, but let me let me point something out to you, which is very interesting. One of the other hotels, and I'm not going to mention the name uh, because I don't want. It's an excellent hotel, and it's been here for a long time. Yep. And they had a tremendous identification with the people in a community, in the local community, but they did not integrate themselves enough in the community development. Yep. So now, now they are losing 15-year employees because the employees don't have schools for their kids. Wow. You see, so you have to look at the whole picture, you know, see how you can, how you can really help the community develop. If the community had a high school that could take their kids, they would stay working at the hotel because they love it and they're great. And it's a great hotel. It's one of the icons of sustainability of Costa Rica. And yep. yet they're going through this kind of a situation. So. Those are the things that we need to be very careful with, you know, and that those are things that would make a big difference because having the proper employees and having them stay on and become part of your family and and have their identification with the clients is the best asset you can have. I agree. So if I can provide them, even if I take that 500 K and invest it in providing them with means by which they can stay which could include building a little school or something, and then the ministry can put in the teachers, et cetera, that might be worth it for my, the investment in my company. Correct. Those are, those are things that need to be looked at very, very carefully, but there's all kinds of alternatives here. It's a, it's a great adventure com country. It's, it's got so many alternatives, so many different possibilities, and they're all fun. So yeah. I would encourage people to come and look at it, but come with an eye of, okay, we're going to do a business, but we're going to have fun while we're doing it. And we're going to contribute to the improvement of our planet by doing so. Awesome. Barry, this has been amazing as always, buddy. I really appreciate you taking time on uh, this thank morning uh, and sharing some of your uh, sage knowledge with us. So um, thank you very much. No, thank you. And thank you for the work you're doing because I know you're guiding people properly in the direction that should be. So I'm very pleased to have you. And, and I'm much more pleased now that you're Costa Rican. I, there you go. I mean, I always say no one's losing money on my watch. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> okay. awesome. Thanks very much, Barry. Take care, Richard. Good to Bye. see you. Always interesting uh, speaking to Barry Roberts there. I mean, a veteran here of Costa Rica. I don't know how many, over 40 years, I think he's been here in Costa Rica and, you know, one of the original godfathers of tourism, as I like to call him. So, and, you know, his viewpoint is very unique. Um, I, I think you have to, I think it, you can see with all the politicians uh, or people involved in politics here, you know, there is a tendency to talk about, um, you know, everything that needs improving in the bad, um, you know, but we did get on to some of the good that Costa Rica has there. It's, um, you know, it's 
the good thing here is that the people have power here, which which we talked about there, and can really direct uh, a lot how the and influence the government, which is very difficult in a lot of countries. But you know, this is a small country, the population of six million people, um, and everyone knows everyone. So you know, and I think everybody has that north in Costa Rica to keep it green and sustainable. Uh, and I think as long as we do that, you know, this country will continue to to thrive. So. Um, remember, if you want to reach out to us, you can do info at investing Costa Rica. That's info at investing Costa Rica. Uh, dot com. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, write us a review. I love to read the reviews, guys. It's always great to see uh, to get people's input. You can also email us just saying how much you're liking it. Uh, anything that you think we can improve as well. I'm no uh, podcast wizard, guys. You know, I just get on a computer and a microphone here uh, and talk to people and ask them questions. So I hope you're enjoying it. Um, and if you are, share it. Until the next podcast, guys, we'll catch you later. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica 